Hello, tiny friends. Welcome back to Tiny Keyhole Minis. I'm Jolene, and I am super, super excited for today. So, um, first and foremost, I'd like to thank all my subscribers. Welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you all for being here. I will be announcing the 1K subscriber mini giveaway winner at the end of the video, so that's super exciting. I also have a new upgrade to my channel. It is the super thanks button that you will see underneath every video. So if you would like to contribute and help support my channel, just click on that button. All contributions will help support my miniature creations and the content of my channel. So I highly appreciate that and I am most thankful and grateful. Um, the old battle axe of the Josephine house will be making her debut today. I am super excited to show you what she looks like and what her name is. I will be skipping through a lot of the sculpting process, but I am going to be showing you what she's looking like as her face is progressing as I'm going along and just kind of point out the more important parts of this journey that helped me along the way so that if you would like to make a doll of your own, if you're making your very first doll or if you want to make a more realistic doll, hopefully some of those things that have helped me will help you all as well. So let's get started. I have some wire coming through the top of the head right now because I'm thinking that this will allow the head to move around and be positionable. But as you can see, I did not make the wire long enough. But at this point, I'm thinking I can just extend the wire and everything will be great. That ends up changing later on down the road, tiny friends. But at this point, I was still going with that idea. So I just wanted to show you uh, where I was going in the beginning of this. I'm going to begin with conditioning the clay. The longer you condition your clay, the better the results are going to be. So you're just going to start by warming it up, rolling it around, pinching it, and just playing with it continuously for a good few minutes. Um, this will allow all the air bubbles and pockets to get released and prevent any white blemishes in the clay that are called moonies. And I'm going to show you what that might look like so that as you're conditioning your clay, you'll know what to look for and you'll know to keep continuing on. Okay, I'm hoping that you can see where there's a little bit of a white blemish and there's actually a hole in there from uh, an air pocket. So if you see any of those while you're conditioning, you'll know to keep going. I went ahead and created a new ball of foil and this one kind of looks like a little egg. The skull is not perfectly round, it's kind of shaped like an egg form somewhat. So. Um, I went ahead and made a new one. It looks a little like an egg, more of an oval and not a round. And I'm going to begin to cover it with thin layers of this clay. Okay, so I've got it covered and you can see it kind of looks a little like an oval. Um, remembering where the jawline is down to the chin and just trying to get that natural shape of the skull. Now I'm going to go in and add my guidelines where my facial features will sit. So I'm just going to take, um, you can use a toothpick or you know anything with a fine point. I'm going to use one of my sculpting needles and I'm just going to make some very light indents where I need to place that. Okay, so now that I have my guide, I'm going to begin with the nose. And this will help me, it'll kind of divide the face so I can begin to work a little easier. 
I'm going to try and focus on the basic features because that is the number one step to get your basic features on there and then go from there. But it's difficult for me <laughs> because I always like to jump ahead of myself and add details as I'm going. So um, I'm teaching myself as I'm doing this to try and stay focused on one step at a time and try to go in that order. Once you get your basic features on, you can begin to fine tune them or add your details and build from there. So I'm just making some indents and where the eyes are going to go. Beginning with the nose is a good place to start because then it gives you a pretty good visual and you can work on whatever side you like or whatever part of the face from there. It's just a good starting point. Okay, so I'm moving right along and I'm beginning to build the cheekbones. This will help the eye sockets become a little deeper. And again, I'm still working on basic features, but I'm just taking tiny little pieces of what I have rolled out. I flatten them just a little bit, not too thin or not much thinner than they already are because they're pretty thin. And I kind of shaped them a little bit and I'm just laying them right underneath the eyes. And then I'm gonna begin to blend that in and begin to build those cheekbones. I'm just gonna give you a visual as we go along periodically so that you can see how her face starts to develop. Um, I did do a little work on the nose, but I will be starting over on that. There will be a lot of changes that will be made as you're working and building the basic features until you're happy with what you like. Okay, so moving along to her eyes, I am beginning with little tiny egg shapes or oval shapes. And then I just slightly flatten them down a little and press them into the eye socket. Her eyes are going to be closed, so that is easy enough where I don't have to worry about creating the eyeball and painting the open eye. Um, <laughs> I just figured uh, this would be an easy way to create the eyes for my very first doll. But I also had the vision of her sitting in her chair, relaxing, soaking her feet. So that kind of all helped um, <laughs> as I'm creating my very first doll. So I'm just putting them in. And then I'm going to begin blending them in and softening up those transition lines. Remember that the eyeball is still in there. So I'm going to try to form a little roundness in the center of the eyelids to give that illusion of the eyeball inside. A lot of times during this process of creating the basic features, um, the marks that are made by the tools that you're using will create some great details and you'll want to keep those details. And a lot of the times I'll see the details in my head as I'm working on the basic features and I begin to add them getting ahead of myself. But it's really important to focus on the basic features first because most of the times you're going to end up losing those details that you've added. Um, it's all just a part of training your brain to focus on first steps first. So it's it's really hard to resist adding those details in, especially because it helps give you a visual of what she may look like or what the face may begin to look like. Okay, so here the eyes kind of look like the eyeballs are drooping down and they're pretty low, but I'm gonna go in and fine tune that. I'm gonna begin to add some deeper, lines underneath those lids and that will be a great place for me to add her eyelashes they'll just sit right in those lines right in those little crevices and i can glue them right in there so this is what is what she's looking like i've added her jowls and brought them down some and you can see that i have taken her nose away and i'm going to begin to work on that as well but just giving you another visual as I'm moving along. Here you can see I began to add some detail in her eye because I could not resist. If I see it, 
I feel like I need to put it down. And as long as I'm not going to be working back in that area, that will pretty much stay there because I know I'm, I'm almost done with that area. So I've given her a new nose and I've made some really deep crevices around her smile line and down her jowls and you can see that her basic features are really starting to take form and come into place um, with a little bit of that fine tuning just of the basic features alone. I love the underneath under her chin and her jowls, it just has some natural details that have taken place on their own. And I'll go in and just smooth them and refine them slightly, but it's one of my favorite parts of her head. Okay, I'm going to show you some of the photos that I'm referencing. And I'm actually just looking at where the features are sitting where the natural age is taking place and um, just basically using it to keep the doll's face more realistic. And using photos is going to be the best thing for you if you're going for realism. You can see here where the smile line begins at the tip, kind of at the top of where the nostrils sit and then come down. And in the beginning, I had them sitting at the bottom of the nostril, so I had to go in and change that. So that's a perfect example as to why you want to look at photos to reference. And I'm not really using any of these faces to create her look, just more so where the natural realism sits on the face. And I'm looking at it in an overall general kind of way because everybody's face is different, but just so that I can get a better idea and I can place it more accurately on the doll's face. And I'm actually referencing a few different faces and I'm just taking what I like from each face and just putting it into one. And that's usually what I do when I'm creating anything that I have to reference. I'll reference a few different photos and I'll just take parts of each photo that I like the most and, and create one whole piece. I'm going to show you a few different photos of facial expressions. Um, when I first decided that I was going to sculpt my doll, I went right into Pinterest and just created a whole board on facial expressions of older women because it really is the best place for inspiration and references. So uh, that's what I did. And we'll go over some of those fe facial features or facial expressions that I just am so in love with that <laughs> they made it to my board. Okay, some of these women have such character. This one is one of my favorites. Look at, imagine her being a doll. If I were to sculpt her face as a doll, she is amazing. I love her. She has so much character, and there's quite a few pictures of her alone that I am referencing. But I adore her. She just has so much character to her face. So I used some of her. Um, look at those smile lines, how deep. The crevices are so you know when you're sculpting you're looking at things like that to see how deep those crevices are to give you a more realistic look referencing that and paying attention to those type of details for the realism here's another photo of her look at how much character this woman has she is definitely an old battle axe and I'm sorry about all the glare from the lights and the reflection, but she was definitely a main inspiration for my doll. Look at her face. What a great expression to put on a doll. Am I right? So Now, knowing that I was going to keep her eyes closed, I did pull up a lot of facial expressions with the eyes closed. And you can see here on this woman... This is the third, fourth woman. Um, her smile lines begin at the top of the nostrils. So that's 
basically average across the board. And you can see some roundness to the eyeball underneath the lid. So um, these are the things that I'm trying to keep in mind when I'm creating a realistic piece. And these are some of the things that you're going to want to try and keep in mind when you're creating in realism as well. But look at all these great faces. I could do this all day long. I could flip through these faces. Look at these. Amazing, right? This is great, right? I, I love doing this. <laughs> this is entertaining in its own. So these, you know, are some of the women that I have been looking at. Uh, here's some more with the eyes closed. You want to go for uh, expressions that you have in mind that you want to try and create. Um, this woman down here kind of looks like Glenn Close a little. Just amazing, amazing facial expressions. And not only that, you're getting realism. I mean, this is pure, natural realism at its finest, tiny friends. So it's very important to reference photos when you're trying to create in a realistic form. I just love these faces. Look at this woman with her mouth open. Wouldn't that make an amazing doll? Just so much character to these faces. And you can now come back to the doll I'm creating and you can see the references in this face and how it's really helped. You can see how it's really helped to give her face a more realistic look. So knowing some of these tips and tricks to the trade, you do not have to have a gift. You don't have to have a natural talent to make your piece a better piece. You just have to know what's behind the scenes, what you need to learn, what you need to look at, and if you want to go for something like this, I highly recommend that you find Karen Baker through Curious Mondo and take up one of her classes or wait for them to have a free class. That's what I did. And take your free class online. One day was all I had. It was a three-day class. But all I was able to get in was one day, and that one day was the most important, crucial day of the class. It's where she taught the head and the ears. Um, I didn't even get to, to the part of the hands and the feet. I had to do that on my own. So um, learning from her was absolutely brilliant and spectacular. She's been doing this for a very long time and she makes character dolls, but they're very realistic and she teaches very slow and for you to be able to understand because she gives a lot of explanation to help you understand and remember what you're learning. Um, so she does a lot of old characters. So a very, very great sculptor. Whether you're going for aged or young, she will teach you how to achieve these realistic features in a way that is memorable. So I'm um, highly recommended for Karen Baker. I'm going to go in and work on the lips, and I'm going to reference that old battle axe and take a look at her, her mouth and her lips. You want to look for how far the mouth is protruding out. And just go on your own judgment on how you want your piece to look. But imagine looking from the side profile. And then look at the piece that you're working on. Mine was a little flatter. It wasn't coming out as much. So I needed to add a little more clay so that I can see. Okay, now you can see there are some lips. They're coming out in a natural way. They don't look concaved or sunken into the face. So you want to look at these kind of things while you're creating a reference where the placement is, how far it's protruding out, um, just to give your piece a more natural look so it doesn't look unnatural. So I'm going to jump into moving on to the ears. Okay, so I am referencing an ear photo. 
I have it zoomed in so that I can see the shape and see how deep the crevices are and go from there. I'm not trying to recreate what I'm looking at. I'm trying to create the realistic parts of the ear so that it looks more realistic and natural on my doll. And I'm beginning with pieces that are shaped like an ear, just a basic shape of the ear. And then I can go in and start to mold it and add the detail to it. So just kind of like almost like half circles and almost like a teardrop shape. Just the, you're looking at just the basic shape. And same with the nose. When I put the nose on, I just created the basic shape of the nose, which was almost like a, te a long teardrop. And then you can go in and fine tune those shapes and you can shape it any way you would like it to look. Everybody's face is different as far as sizes and how far they're protruding out or how far they're hanging or laying and you know how small they may be. Some people's are larger, smaller. So you just go in with your own judgment and how you want your piece to look. So I'm adding the, the ear and I'm going to jump forward because I have so much more to get to. Um, I just wanted to get some of that really important information in because a lot of you are wondering how I'm doing this or how am I getting it to look so realistic and it's really all about knowing what to look for and knowing how to find those things so that you can add it to your piece. Once you learn that, you're good to go. It's just learning that stuff first. It's kind of like the textbook stuff to creating. So this isn't all just coming from my head and I'm just doing this in a natural whim. It's what I've learned to incorporate that into my creation. And that's the most important part of this. Okay, so here she is and she is almost ready to bake. I am just softening up some of those features smoothing out some of the clay that needs to be done but for the most part this is her she looks like a little old man right now <laughs> a little bald man um but i'm gonna bake her okay tiny friends so she's baked her head is on um it's positionable i am able to move her around i have extended the wire two things. I suck at manipulating wire and using this copper wire was not a good idea. So I will not be using it in the future because it's not really strong enough. And I'm afraid because it broke so easily on me, I'm going to keep her in a sitting position uh, throughout the house for the most part. I don't really want to try and bend her legs often or her her um, limbs because I'm, I'm afraid that it's not going to hold up over the years if I continue to move her and place her around. So most of the placements will be sitting and I can eliminate any breakage later on down the road. So lots that I have learned during the creation of her, um, do's and don'ts and what I can move forward in for my next dolls. Uh, but the copper wire was not a very good reliable wire to go with. Even though I twisted it, it's a lot of movement breaks it quite easily. Um, I realized that uh, her neck is too long and that bending her head a lot is going to break that wire. It's not strong enough at the bottom point where I have added more wire. So I went in to try and make it stronger by adding more wire and it did give it you know, it felt like it had more strength, but it ended up breaking on me. So second solution, it turned out to be kind of a better one. I added more clay and I molded the clay. I made a little mold with her head. So now her head sits into her neck instead of her neck sitting into her head. That's quite okay. I'll have to glue it on. I won't be able to position her head around and that's okay too, because she is my first doll. So it is a big learning process, but the good thing is I can get more details into her neck and make it look a little more realistic. So here it is. Her head is glued on. She's all baked. She has a fuller neck, which I kind of like better. And I was able to give her neck some more detail. So it worked out overall in the end. Um, but I am losing that, um, that posable head that I really wanted to have. I mean, these things happen and you just have to learn how to adjust 
to those changes that you cannot control and just roll with them. Adapt and adjust, right, tiny friends? So I'm going to go in and give her some color, and I want to keep it more natural. I don't want to put makeup on. I want to give her skin tones some natural um, aging and some coloring that normally occur uh, with age, maybe around the ears and the nose and the chin, the cheeks, um, a little bit of purples and pinks around the eyelids and in the eyes, in the sockets. Okay, so you can see what that looks like here and how she just looks like she has natural color to her skin tone. Um, I am actually going to go in and add some eyebrows and eyelashes. So with her eyelashes, I am just using false eyelashes that I had on hand. And with her eyebrows, I actually use the real hair that I'm going to be putting on her head. So she has realistic looking eyebrows. For the lashes, at this time, they're not on permanently. I only put them on temporary because I wasn't really sure how I felt about them or if I wanted to keep them on. But these are the lashes I was using and I just trimmed them down to very micro size pieces and you'll see those in a little bit. I did decide that I did like them and I wanted to glue them on permanently. So I'm going to do that after I do her hair. Uh, for her body wrap, I filled in that empty space on her shoulders and a little bit more around her waist. I'm thinking about adding just a little bit more padding around her hips and maybe her backside. I'm also going to be filling in a little bit of that space where her knees are so when I bring her back to dress her and clothe her um, I'm I might add that on but I like the way the padding looks around her shoulders okay so for her hair I decided to put her hair in rollers I have these pencil caps that I've taken off the pencils they hold the erasers and I really want to try to put this one in her hair because it looks like a little soup can so I'm really going to try to do that. I am also going to be showing you how you can make your own metal rollers and how simple that's going to be. You can make several different sizes as well. So starting with an aluminum pie pan, I cut the bottom off and I'm going to take this bamboo skewer and just make a couple creases about a quarter of an inch, just a little over a quarter of an inch wide. I'm only going to do two because I think that two will be plenty. Uh, but once I get these little strips cut off, I'm going to roll this strip nice and tight right around that bamboo skewer. And I'm going to do two more different sizes. But for this size and for the smaller size, no glue is required to create these. So take your little strip, nice tight roll completely all the way around and adding a little extra for closure. And this will pretty much stay put, tiny friends. It's going to keep its shape. So this is what it looks like. Clip it off. Once you clip it off, you're just going to stick it back onto the skewer lay the skewer on the table and give it a nice tight roll a couple times and that will close the roller tightly and that's it so i use a toothpick and a chopstick for the other sizes with the chopstick or uh, with the larger roller i actually did have to use a little bit of glue for that because with the larger roller it, it was having a hard time staying closed so i just put it back on the stick, added a little bit of jewelry and metal glue, you can add super glue, and then I just pinched it closed until it took grip. And that was it. That is how simple it is to make these little metal rollers. And now I'm going to add some hair to them. Okay, so beginning with the hair. Um, a very light pencil line right around where the hairline would sit. And this is going to give me a guide for placement. I'm going to take one of those wefts that I made previously and I'm going to create a rat, a hair rat. I'm just rolling it up in my hand, getting it all ratty, and this is going to be placed on her head first as just a layer of hair. Now this doesn't have to be pretty. 
This is one of the techniques that I learned in the previous videos that I listed in the description box underneath the hair video that I posted last. So um, I'm just taking my tacky glue and I'm going to glue a small section at a time and I'm going to just add the hair to cover the head. So this is what it looks like. And I'm going to let it dry completely before coming back to it. When it dries, I'm going to come back and add just a little bit of hair gel to smooth down all those flyaways and get that hair, that first layer of hair, nice and smooth. So here it is. This is what it looks like. It's all smoothed down. Now, while this is drying, I'm going to show you how to add hair to those rollers. Okay. I am going to use the wefts that I made previously and I'm just taking a little bit of the hair gel and I'm running it straight through that strand. Once I get that nice and covered, it's going to act as a setting gel. It's going to make the hair more manageable and easier to roll, just like in real life. I'm going to comb through it and get any of the tangles out, any debris, any knots that might be stuck in it, but just to get it nice and straight and a bit smoother. Uh, this will help give the rolled hair a nice smooth finish. I'm going to add a little bit of fabric tack to the roller and I'm going to begin with the end of the hair. I'm going to wrap it around a little bit and then I'm going to start winding the whole piece up. And as I'm doing this, I'm pulling down nice and tight and I'm trying to get an even coverage around the roller. Now this doesn't take a lot of hair. You just need a thin layer of hair, just enough to go around and make it look covered. So it looks like this. It's pretty nice and smooth. Okay, so I'm going to snip off the excess, use fabric tack to glue that shut smooth it down and this is what it looks like and then the side that I glued closed will actually be what I am gluing to the head so you won't even see it okay so I mentioned in the previous video the hair video that I wanted to show you what else you can do with these ringlets or how uh, you can use them to create various hairstyles now you can always drape them down straight down but if you take a handful of these, you can create several different hairstyles, um, including updos, partials, like you could have half hanging down and use them for the front end. You can give them a little twist, wrap them around the front of her head, bring it down a little bit, create some bangs. You can use these to create volume. You can roll them up and create a bun uh, if you take them and twist them a little bit tighter they'll become a little smaller and you can bring that roll a little closer to the head um, like this so you can make it a little smaller so there's several ways that you can use these rolls or these ringlets to create multiple hairstyles and they're super fun you just get creative with it so i wanted to show you that tiny friends and now i'm just doing a dry fit for the soup can to make sure that it's going to work so i am going to get to use it and i'm going to begin with the larger rolls i'm using a little bit of fabric tack and i'm just going to place it right in the middle down her mid shaft like a mohawk and I'm going to press it down and give it a good hold just for a few minutes until it takes hold and then I'm going to give it another dry fit with the soup can just to make sure I left enough space and then I'm going to proceed on using one more large can and then going down to the smaller sizes so this is what her hair looks like all rolled up I absolutely love the way it looks I really really do 
and I'll turn her around so you can see the back give you a good view of what her hair rollers look like now I did leave a little bit of space underneath around the bottom because I'm going to add a hair wrap so I have some blue tulle I added a little bit of fabric tack right in the back of her neck underneath that mid shaft and this will help hold the tool down while I'm wrapping it so I'm placing it partially around the rollers and partially around her ears I want it to cover right around the edge of the rollers so I'm just holding it into place twisting the ends so that it's a little bit easier to tie in a knot once I get it lined up I'm just going to tie it up in a knot nice and tight and this is what it looks like I'm going to snip off the ends okay once I get those ends snipped off all I'm going to do is just fluff up those tails a little bit so I'm just going to pull them out and fluff them up and then I'm going to add the soup can and I'm still using fabric tack for that as well I'm just going to place that right in the front as if they were her bangs and this is what it looks like I adore this so much and you can see all the color blends in the hair that I added all together okay not done yet tiny friends I have to fix those eyelashes so this is how small they are they're very micro very very tiny and I do not know how I was able to work with that but I just use a little bit of tacky glue I didn't want to use super glue because I'm so messy with glue and a lot of times super glue will dry white and I didn't want that all over her face so a little bit of tacky glue and I replaced her eyelashes but tiny friends I am NOT done yet see these little tiny strands I made those wefts previously they were just tiny little gray blends and pieces I'm actually going to use those to add a couple in her hair for some wispies that are hanging out so I did uh, use a little bit of hair gel and ran it down the strand and I just stuck one right in the front behind her bangs and I'm going to stick one right in the back on the other side okay tiny friends this is what she looks like I love her so much and one of my favorite details is actually these wispies they're just so wild they cannot be tamed <laughs> I love them so I'm talking about her name now originally I was going to do a viewers vote because I had quite a few names picked out and I couldn't decide so I was going to let you all decide on her name and pick her name but most of you know uh, we have lost our Grammy we were losing her during the process of making her and I would go down there and show her all the miniatures I was working on and she was just so amazed by what I was creating um, and she got to see her up up to this point now her original name was Margaret and she was on a bowling team years ago and they gave her a nickname and they called her Margot. So I thought it was only appropriate and fitting that this old battle axe be named Margot. So tiny friends, meet Margot. I absolutely adore her so much. I need to make her some clothes because she is cold. <laughs> so when I come back with her, I'll be uh, working a little bit on her body wrap and creating her um, some clothes and also filling in her basin tub and then she will be absolutely a hundred percent completed her scene will be completed and I can go back to that sewing room upstairs to that back room that I've been wanting to get back to so I hope you all have enjoyed this video if you have please let me know what you thought about this some of your favorite parts are what you like the most in the comments below i want to thank you all for subscribing if you subscribe don't forget to hit that top bell notification button to be notified every time i upload a new video also 
don't forget to hit that like button and give this video a thumbs up. So for the winner of the mini giveaway, the winner is Beth Anderson. Beth Anderson, you have won my first giveaway. I'm super excited. I know you've been around for a while. You leave such wonderful comments. Thank you so much for joining me on my miniature journey. Thank you so much for being a part of this. I would like you to uh, reach out to me through my email. I will leave my email in the description box below and we will go from there. I can correspond with you that way. When I uh, respond. I'll get all the information I need to get this out for you. And also I was able to create the umbrella Beth. So you'll have that as well. It won't be exactly the same as mine. It's actually a little more lightweight, but it is still really cool. So thank you so, so much. Tiny friends, thank you all for watching. I will see you soon. Until the next time, you all have a lovely day and I will see you all on the mini side. Bye-bye.